Good morning. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord today. It's wonderful to have the opportunity that we're going to have in a few minutes as our guests come and present the gospel for us. But as we get started this morning, the first thing I want to do is to welcome visitors. If we have a visitor here, I would encourage you to take and look at your bulletin. And I've lost my podium, sorry. <laughs> look at your bulletin, and there's a tear-out section. That tear-out section will allow you to fill out personal information if, as much as you want. Take it to the Welcome Center, out to the front door to the left, and you'll be able to get information about the ministries here at Daniel Missionary Baptist Church. So we encourage you to do that, and we hope that you continue to worship the Lord with us. Additionally, there's also a baskets on top of our offering boxes. If you remember, we've announced for the last two weeks that this is a special offering for Dwayne Pease to help him financially recover from his situation where he was in the hospital for extended a period of time and his 80-20 copay and we're just hoping that we can meet the needs of his family and of, of taking care of those needs to help him in this, as he recovers and goes on to serve the Lord. Additionally, you can read the bulletin, so I'm not going to read it to you. Just very quickly, August Missionary, you can see is Danny White. And I want to call attention to the next item, though, on the list. It says Awana. For those previously worked in Awana, well, not to let the cat out of the bag, but we're totally revamping the Wednesday night service for the young people here at Daniels Missionary Baptist. We will be moving away from Awana, and we will be working in a small segment and the leaders that volunteer will be volunteering for a one or two month period. So some of you I know had always said that the fact that it was a full eight months made it very difficult for you to volunteer. This is a new opportunity for you to get involved in a ministry because your time frame will only be for one or two months as you present the gospel to these children. So we're encouraging everyone who had limitations to come to the meeting this afternoon, you'll see there is a meeting at 5.30. There's also a business meeting this evening. That business meeting will be going over our annual information. The list of candidates for office are on the table in the foyers. You can go ahead and pick those up and look at them this afternoon if you desire. Additionally, well, before we announce our special service, I mean, we'll have Brother Larry come forward. He's going to tell us about fifth quarter, and he's also going to lead us in morning prayer. Well, what I'd like to say to you this morning, it's a great opportunity to have the young people from ABC to be with us, and you're surely going to be blessed. And uh, young people are a big part of our church. They're not only the church of tomorrow, but they're the church of today. Our church has always had a great burden for young people. Down through the years, we've always reached out and tried to touch young people's lives. And that's what Fifth Quarter is all about. Uh, every Friday night that the Shady Tigers are home, we bring them down to our fellowship hall. And we feed them and have some uh, wonderful time with them. And uh, then send them on their way. But you know, it's a great thing realizing what young people mean you know uh, Jesus loved young people you know all through the scripture he always talked about uh, the fact to let the the young people the children uh, come to him and you know we as a church uh, we constantly need to be challenged in our heart to reach out to young people another thing is young people are prospects for salvation I know it's hard to believe but all of you that was saved between the age of 4 and 19, would you just stand up right now? You were saved between the age of 4 and 19. Church, I want you to look around. They call this the window of opportunity. That you have an opportunity, you may be seated. You have a window of opportunity to reach young people for the Lord. Because when they get older... It's harder to reach people for God. Think about cement. You take cement sometimes, and you take it, and you uh, pour it. You can put handprints in it, and you can write dates, and you can do a lot of things. 
But as it begins to harden, let me tell you, it's harder to do anything with cement. So it's very important. And last of all, it's the potential for service. Look at our church. Michaela's up in the sound room today. Brandon's up in the sound room. We have different kids are in our nursery doing children's church this morning. And so our young people are a big part of this church. And so what I want to say to you, as you get ready to exit after the good music this morning, think about having a part in fifth quarter. We're going to have two people, Megan and Tyler, at the Welcome Center. And if you can do... Uh, bring some cookies, which would be greatly appreciated because young people like to eat. And uh, if you can come and just help us uh, pass that out to these young people. And uh, maybe security. Uh, if you can help us with security, it's always good to have young people in safe places. And so if you will do that as you go out. And a lot of you last year bought gift cards. If you can buy gift cards for these young people, let me tell you, uh, a tank of gas or $10 worth of gas to young people means a whole lot. And so uh, just remember that. Uh, and you may not be able to do it today, but through the month of August, we're going to have people out in the Welcome Center. Okay, let us pray. Father, as we come in your sweet spirit this morning, dear God, I want to thank you for how good that you are. Dear God, in a nation that's full of violence and full of hurt, dear God, that there's a place that we can come to the house of God, a refuge, Father, in a time of trouble. And dear God, Father, thank you so much for that. And Father, the Lord, I thank you for these young people, what their lives represent. We can only see just a small part of it, but one day as they go out and serve in different places, dear God, what a blessing they will be. Encourage those that are here. Uh, bless those that made uh, the dinner for those young people and those who will take care of it. In Jesus' name, and amen. Well, this, the same way that we're trying to reach all the students at Shady Spring High School through the fifth quarter, we have with us today the Gospel Heralds from ABC, and they're trying to reach out to the community and to individuals to encourage them, I'm sure, to attend ABC, but also just to praise the Lord. And I wish that all of you would join with me and clap and welcome them for their service.
of the 2019 Gospel Heralds Group from Appalachian Bible College. Please join us as we lift his name and give him praise. How great is our God! A powerful statement, but when we think about how the word great dominates so much of our daily conversation, it makes us pause and think. Have we stopped to think of some of the ways the strength of this word has been downplayed by its common use in our lives? What a great day! Wow, what a great church. Yeah. I had the greatest steak last night. Wasn't that a great basketball game? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so fun. Great. Things are going great. Truly, we use the word great to describe things that don't always deserve such a title. We use great to describe our own satisfaction with what our hands touch, our lips taste, our eyes see, or even our heart desires. So how can we share this human description of great with our most high God, the maker of heaven and earth? We can't. This morning, we reclaim the word great as a word, a scriptural word that truly only belongs to our heavenly Father. God is great, powerful, important, distinguished from all others. God is great, exalted, without boundaries, incomparable. God is great, glorious and grand, exceptional, superior. God is great. I will extol thee, O God, my King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. And, and men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious, and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee.
has to bloom and in the desert sand provide the gentle soaking rain refreshing thirsty land you send the warming of the sun the fragile snowflake too we bow in gratitude O oh Lord there is none like you you paint the rainbow on the storm and tell the winds to Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made the heaven with all their host, the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas, and all that is therein. And thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command and all the stars obey. Lord 
morning. Good to be with you this morning. Appreciate you having us. There's no greater thought that can fill our minds than the greatness of our God. So if you're like me, you think about a lot of things, and sometimes that can be a problem, that we start to worry about things. But if we can focus upon the greatness of our God, uh, that's something that gives us strength for, for today and for tomorrow. As the, the Gospel Heralds continue to program, please notice as we focus on these doctrinal truths that they demand of us a response. You know, because God is this, that means I should do this. You know, there's always a response to good doctrine. As they finish their program this morning, they're going to sing a song called, Oh Great God. You know, because of who you are, you deserve everything about me. I, I bow down and I worship you because of who you are. So as they sing, as they continue their program, please respond to who God is and give him your, your very self because of who he is. I want to draw your attention to a few things on our literature table. Obviously, you are familiar with ABC, and we appreciate your support. We appreciate you having some of our faculty and staff and even some of our students here as a, a part of your church. Let me draw your attention to a few things, though. There are some events coming up this fall. We have a Senior Saints Fall Retreat, which would be a good opportunity to, to be encouraged in the things of the Lord. We also have a, a couple's retreat or a couple's escape. Those are both coming up this fall. I hesitate to use the word great, but that keeps coming out. But those are great opportunities to, to be encouraged in the Lord and to, to meet other people and, and just be accountable to them as well. Heaven forbid, but if you are unfamiliar with our school, there's a brochure like this that gives you some beautiful pictures of our campus. We are blessed to be in a beautiful location. We have some great resources all around us, and we thank the Lord for the campus that he's given to us. If you know of young people who are interested in serving the Lord or just seeking God's direction for their life, ABC just might be the place for them. So please get some information at our table as well. Finally, there are some white cards like this. The first one is just a general interest card. If you would like to be on the college's mailing list, please get one of these out. Or if you know someone who is interested in college, this would be a great way for us to give them some information. And then finally, the other card is called the President's Prayer Partners. And this is not President Trump. This is Dr. Anderson. He sends out a weekly email with some items of praise and prayer. We still believe in the importance and the power of prayer, and we need your prayer more than ever. You know, the world that we are living in desperately needs what we are doing, and we ask you to, to pray with us, and you can get some weekly prayer for any of you get one of these prayer cards. All right, I'm going to ask the team to come back and finish their program.
invisible. your glory is filling this place. Yes, your glory is filling this place. You're the God of forever and ever. Amen. The Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. We sing Alleluia. We worship in all. Immortal, invisible God. Cause you're coming to reign as our king And the saints will fall down at your feet You're the God of forever and ever, amen The Alpha, Omega, beginning and end We sing Alleluia, we worship in all Immortal, invisible God glad to be here this morning with you guys just to minister through song and scripture and it was great getting to know a couple of you during the Sunday school hour and just talking before um, the service this morning but I think it's about time that you guys got to know a little bit about all of us guys hey can we do this in an orderly fashion <laughs> Caleb why don't you go first okay hi I'm Caleb I'm a sophomore studying music at Appalachian Bible College and I grew up just a few miles down the road at Flat Top, West Virginia. I always thought the name of that, I always thought the name was kind of ironic because the only thing flat here in the Great Mountain State is the name of that mountain. <laughs> Caleb, you're right. West Virginia is great. But I also love the farm fresh air where I'm from in Vanver, Ohio. Howdy, my name is Allison and I play basketball and am majoring in elementary education. Hey, you know, basketball and elementary education are great tools that can be used on the mission field. My name is Andrew, and I'm a junior in the missions program. Hi, everyone. My name is Mallory Reinhardt, and I live on the campus of, App of Appalachian Bible College where my dad teaches. And I like to think that I am the greatest of the ten kids in my family. Bom dia, gente. Meu nome é André. Estou muito animado de ficar aqui e cantar com este grupo de pessoas muito legais. Andrew! Haven't I taught you English by now? Oh, that's right, I forgot again. So a couple years ago, I got to spend a great summer in Brazil. And I even learned Portuguese while I was down there. The downside is that every now and then, I mix up my languages. My name is also Andrew, and I'm also looking to go into foreign missions. And I'm sure we would all agree that I'm the greatest Andrew on this team. Ooh. Probably. Teaching Andrew English has been a great challenge, but it will prepare me for my future. My name is Michaela, and my missions major is teaching English as a second language. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, right.
those days. Practice, practice, practice. But it all pays off in the end. Josiah, I'm sure you will do great. Take it from this music major. My name is Rebecca, and I recently graduated from the music program. You know, Rebecca, I'm sure glad that you survived your senior recital. But oh. I'm learning how to survive in the great outdoors in my college major. Hi, my name's Titus, and I'm a sophomore in the camping ministries major. Hang on a second, guys. Aren't we using the word great in the way we just said we weren't going to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, point, guys. yeah, that's right. While we often do use the word great to refer to things in our lives that we enjoy, the reality is that nothing can compare with the greatness of our great God. Truly, our God is great and mighty. for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. He is my Redeemer. Great the pain. 
I grew up in a home that truly desired to please God. My dad was a deacon at our church, and my mom homeschooled us as she was, and was the secretary of our church. In every portion of our life, they tried to implement God, whether it was through our education, whether it was through hunting, or whether it was through music. They always sought to point, for us to point others to God. I remember as a three-year-old attending Sunday school, I heard my Sunday school teacher say, if you want to be saved, you just have to ask God to save you and pray. And so, not thinking, not even really talking to God, I said, Lord, save me. And for me, it was settled. You know, I had said the prayer, so obviously I must be saved. Nearly five years later, our church took a trip to a place called Camp Josiah. I don't remember much about what happened there, but I remember as an eight-year-old, I walked away from that camp with many questions about my salvation. I remember thinking, you know, I'm not exactly the best person. I'm not exactly living for God. Am I really saved? But I said that prayer, so I must be saved. It wasn't until a year later, at the same place, traveling with an evangelist from Camp Josiah, that I realized that I, that, that prayer wasn't even talking to God. It, that prayer didn't save me. I remember the verse, Ephesians 2, 8, For by grace are ye saved, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. I realized then that it was no prayer that could save me, and that even though I was praying, I wasn't even talking to God. I realized then that I was a sinner, and I needed God to save me. It was that night I went behind the boys' bunkhouse. I, asked, I got down on my knees and asked God to save me. Since then, God has used my family, my church, many different camps, and now Appalachian Bible College. And he has worked in me a desire to truly serve and point others to him. To this day, I will always thank God for the saving grace that saves me from my sin. And I thank God that he is great and mighty.
justice has been satisfied. Has been satisfied, he will hold me fast. Raised with him to endless life, he will hold me fast. Till our faith is turned to sight, when he comes at last.
had no taste for heaven's joys, then your spirit